Brittany Ann Ford just couldn't catch a break. In April of 2015, Brittany was a 28-year-old mother of a six-month-old baby boy. Her little boy, Declan, was a smiling baby with bouncing curls. Brittany and her husband, Ricardo, were living in Conyers, Georgia. Late one evening in April, Brittany called the police and reported to them that Ricardo was beating her and her son. Police arrived and advised her to take the baby and go stay at a hotel. She agreed, but instead she drove all night up to Ohio where her mother and brother lived. After some erratic behavior in Ohio, her mother had her placed under a 72-hour watch in a mental hospital. Three days later, she was released and went to stay with her brother. On the morning of May 4th, Brittany's brother woke up and found both Brittany and Declan gone. Although he would bizarrely hear from Brittany one more time in a couple of weeks, he would never see Brittany or Declan again. Where are Brittany and Declan Ford? feeling you could ever imagine you feel completely out of control you don't know what to do you just panic concerned and has let the authorities know that over the last year. I'm numb. I don't know what to do. This one is, has everyone perplexed. It's, nothing really makes sense here. Hello, and welcome back to the Where Are They podcast. The story of Brittany and Declan Ford is super bizarre, and frankly, I'm surprised it hasn't received more media attention just because of the circumstances. This is a timeline case that spans over several states, so I will do my best to keep the sequence of events in order and easy to follow, but there will be a lot of interesting things that happened during April and May of 2015. The goal of our podcast is to spread awareness of the lesser known missing persons cases. In many cases, someone out there does know something and we can't let these people go unnoticed. Let's give a voice to those that don't have one. Before we dive in, I want to welcome our new Patreon member, Sharon Haynes from Colorado. Sharon also sent us a couple of great case suggestions that I had never heard of before. So Sharon, thank you so much for joining us on Patreon and supporting the show and keep the case suggestions coming. If anyone has a case they would like to hear, please send me an email at canwefindthem at gmail.com. So let's talk about the really strange case of Brittany and Declan Ford. Brittany Ann Ford was born July 24th, 1986. Not much is known about her childhood, but all indicators is that she might not have had the most stable environment growing up. As an adult, she married Ricardo Ford, and together they had little Declan Ford, born October 4th, 2014. Now, I mentioned this case is a timeline case, but it also crosses over several states. 
In fact, official missing persons reports have their disappearances in different locations. Some have them as missing from Georgia, some Columbus, Ohio, and yet others say Hardin, Montana. And as we look over the details of their disappearance, you will see why. In April of 2015, the exact date, which isn't confirmed, Brittany and Ricardo have a fight and Brittany calls the police. She tells them that Ricardo is abusing the baby. The police respond to their home and advise Brittany that she should take Declan and go to a hotel for the night. And it doesn't appear that Ricardo is arrested that night, which leaves me a little confused as to what actually happened. And as the story goes on, you'll see maybe a little more why I'm questioning the events of that night. So Brittany packs an overnight bag and takes Declan, telling the police she is heading to a hotel. However, for some reason, she instead decides to make the 10-hour drive to Columbus, Ohio, where her mother and other family members live. Shortly after she arrives in Columbus, she starts accusing her stepfather of abusing her sister. And her behavior becomes quite erratic. And on April 16th, her family actually has her admitted to a mental hospital on a 72-hour hold. They believed she was having a mental break of some kind, understandably so, were quite worried. Baby Declan would stay with family. During that time that Brittany was hospitalized, McCardo drives from Conyers, Georgia, up to Columbus to visit Brittany in the hospital. But Brittany refuses to see him. So this does make me wonder about the incident, or supposed incident, with Ricardo in Georgia. Was this the start of Brittany's mental break and Ricardo was accused of something he didn't do? Or was he in fact abusive towards her and or baby Declan? It does seem like he made an effort to get to Ohio right away after hearing about Brittany's hospitalization. But I guess we just really don't know. On April 19th, Brittany is released from the hospital and goes to stay with her brother. And for a couple weeks, things seem to be normal. At least that's what we believe. On May 4th, now two weeks after her release from the hospital, her brother wakes up and finds both Brittany and Declan missing. He believes that she had just gone out to pick up some food. Her purse was missing, as was Declan's diaper bag, but the rest of her personal items were still there. She still had clothing there and other personal belongings of hers and Declan's, and her brother didn't really think too much about it. However, when she still wasn't home that evening, the family started to look around for her. On May 7th, the family went to Columbus Police Department to officially report her missing. One thing that does bother me about that is the three days it took to report her missing. She had recently been having severe enough mental health issues that she had been briefly hospitalized. It seems that would be reason enough to worry and report her missing right away, especially because she had a six-month-old baby with her. And to me, this seems to fit the bill for a silver alert. A silver alert is an alert that is activated when an elderly, developmentally, or cognitively impaired person has gone missing and is determined to be at risk. Silver alerts provide immediate information to the public to aid in the swift recovery of an at-risk persons that meet that criteria. Silver Alert was started in Colorado in 2006, and by the end of 2008, 12 other states had implemented a Silver Alert system. Delaware, Florida, Georgia, Kentucky, Louisiana, Missouri, North Carolina, Ohio, Oklahoma, Rhode Island, Texas, and Virginia. So in my opinion, I feel that she and Declan should have been officially reported missing on May 4th, and should have possibly qualified for a silver alert. 
I also don't see any record of an Amber Alert being issued for Declan. And Ohio also has Amber Alerts set up statewide. And some have said that this is because he was with his mother. But I found this information on the Amber Alert website indicating that he still may have qualified for an Amber Alert. This information comes straight from the Amber Alert website. The law enforcement agency must believe that the child is in imminent danger of serious bodily injury or death. There is enough descriptive information about the victim and the abduction for law enforcement to issue an Amber Alert to assist in the recovery of the child. The abduction is of a child aged 17 years or younger. So if Brittany was unstable, maybe Declan was in danger. And they also had good descriptions of both Brittany and Declan and knew what type of car Brittany was driving. She was in her own white 2007 Nissan Versa with Georgia license plates. They also had the license plate number. So it seems more than enough information to put out an amber alert or a silver alert. Through some type of GPS tracking, the specifics are which are unclear, but I believe it has something to do with her activity on Facebook. They believe she went back to Georgia. But on May 14th, things would take a big turn when the family found out that a police officer had helped her with a flat tire somewhere in Indiana. He helped her and not knowing she was a missing person at the time, sent her on her way. Everything seemed normal. On May 16th, family would once again get a surprise when Brittany called up her brother and asked him to borrow $10,000. Again, we don't have much information or the specifics about this as to why she needed it, if it was just to get on her feet somewhere, or if there was another reason she needed upwards of $10,000. It seems like a lot of money if she just needed some cash to get by. But again, we don't know the circumstances. The very next day, May 17th, her car was found abandoned on the side of Highway 87 near Hardin, Montana. And I looked at this area really closely on Google Maps. And I looked at Highway 87 and the part of it that goes through Hardin, Montana. And while it does seem to be a main highway through that area, it's still pretty rural. In fact, in most places, there's just farmland on both sides of the highway with an occasional business popping up here or there. And the business I'm talking about is a barn or a large shed type of building that you can see on Google Maps. It's a four-lane highway, two lanes running east and two lanes going west with a median in the middle. And it's not clear if she was on the eastbound side or the westbound side. But Highway 87 runs east and west, leading into Billings, Montana. Hardin, Montana is about an hour to the east of Billings. So because she had left Ohio and then ended up in Indiana... And now is in Montana, it seems that she's probably traveling west. Inside her car were Declan's car seat, Brittany's medication, and all of her personal belongings. I do want to note that the reports say all her personal belongings, but nothing specific is mentioned, such as cell phone, purse, money, anything like that. And it's believed at first that Brittany ran off and just doesn't want to be found, that she is hiding from someone or something. However, her family immediately is concerned for her and Declan, especially considering Brittany's recent mental health struggles. Brittany had recently been talking about going to Texas, so it was reported that she might be heading down there. Although no one is aware of any ties that she might have had to anyone in Texas, it was apparently something she talked about frequently. Brittany's case doesn't receive much attention because it is thought that she voluntarily left the area of her own accord. 
But you'd think with her fragile mental state and the fact that she was traveling with an infant, there would be some urgency here and certainly a case that the media would pick up on. So that brings us to present day, six years later. And there have been no sightings of Brittany or Declan, no formal searches organized that I'm aware of, and no one has heard anything from them. Declan would now be six and a half years old. If Brittany and Declan had ran off, it would become harder and harder to hide as Declan gets older. Their names and photographs have been on many mailers, and they are listed as missing persons. Declan is in the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children's Database also. And what makes this tricky is where to even look for them. If Brittany's goal was to disappear, she could be anywhere. And there didn't seem to be much rhyme or reason to the states she was traveling through. With most of her family and connections seemingly in Georgia or Ohio, it seems unlikely she'd be there if she was hoping to be in hiding. But with the very limited facts that we do have about this really bizarre case, I definitely am left with some questions. Why didn't this qualify for an Amber Alert or a Silver Alert, knowing Brittany's very recent history of possible mental illness? And then there's the car. What happened when her car was found? Was that area searched? Was the car checked for mechanical difficulties? Did she maybe break down or even run out of gas? Why did Brittany take off in the first place? Was there a valid reason for her and her son to escape? Or was this the result of a mental breakdown? With such bizarre circumstances surrounding their disappearance, why didn't this case receive more media coverage? It's interesting. It involves a child. It was multi-states. And why haven't we heard more, or anything really for that matter, from Mercado? I did learn that in 2018, Mercado did set up a GoFundMe to continue search efforts. That has since been taken down, but I've seen no interviews or articles or statements made from him beyond that. So we are left wondering not only why she and Declan were in Montana to begin with, but what happened on Highway 87 to cause her to pull her car over and abandon it? And then what happened after that? There are so many possible layers to the why this happened, but let's take a look at what may have happened out there. Theory number one, Brittany had car trouble and she and Declan got a ride from someone to get away from the area. Maybe she made it somewhere completely random and set up a new life for her and Declan, Washington State, California, or maybe she made it down to Texas after all. My only concern with this theory is why hasn't she let anyone in her family know that she and Declan are safe? And if Declan's social security number shows up anywhere, it should be flagged. A doctor's office, school, health insurance. I don't know. A lot of people believe this is the case. And honestly, it's probably the best case scenario. I just don't know. Theory number two. Brittany had car trouble and was picked up by someone and met with foul play. I've talked before about the advantage travelers have when it comes to kidnapping and committing murders. In fact, there was a task force at one time dedicated to the investigation of possible truck driver serial killers. Some people have mentioned that the area her car was found in might not have been the greatest of areas. Theory number three, Brittany pulled over, parked her car, and walked off, possibly due to having a psychotic episode. And if this is the case, she may have wandered off into the wilderness. Montana is full of remote places, mountains, rivers, lakes, and just acres and acres of woods and farmland. And being this was in May, she likely wasn't running into super cold winter temperatures. But if she managed to survive out there until winter, it's 
doubtful she could have made it through the harsh weather conditions, at least not without some help. Interestingly, Hardin was very recently the location for the filming of a documentary on Montana's unsolved missing persons cases with a focus on Indigenous women. The name of the film is Say Her Name and discusses the problem of missing persons cases in the area and the lack of investigation completed on them. The film might focus on Indigenous women and Brittany is not one but it might showcase some serious problems that are happening in that very area where Brittany and Declan vanished from. I'll leave a link to the documentary in the show notes if you are interested and you do want to check it out. So what do you think happened to Brittany Ann Ford and Declan Ford? Do you think they are still alive out there? Brittany's family set up a Facebook page to help her case gain some attention please go check it out. You can find it titled Find Brittany and Declan. I truly hope the family can have answers soon. It's been six years of not knowing what happened to Brittany and little Declan, and that must be absolutely heartbreaking. Declan was just seven months old. Brittany is described as a Caucasian female with brown hair and brown eyes. Brittany has a tattoo of the word Zion, that's Z-I-O-N, on the back of her neck. She stands five foot four inches tall and weighed 160 pounds at the time of her disappearance. Declan is described as a biracial African American and Caucasian male, brown hair, brown eyes, and again he was just seven months old at the time of his disappearance, but today he would be six and a half years old. Brittany's family still believes that they may be in the areas of Texas or possibly even Georgia. If you have any information as to the whereabouts of Brittany and Declan Ford, please contact the Columbus, Ohio Police Department at 614-645-4545. I'll try and share some age progression photographs of Declan that the Center for Missing and Exploited Children had created, and I encourage you to share his info and Brittany's any way you can. Someone has to know something. Someone had to see something. Where are Brittany and Declan Ford? Thank you so much for tuning into this episode and hearing Brittany and Declan's story. There is still a family, two families, out there that continue to search and pray for answers to their whereabouts and what happened on that fateful day in May of 2015. Keep listening and showing your support to these families as they need it more and more every day that goes by. We will be back on Friday with a bonus episode on Patreon and again next week right here with another Unsolved Missing Persons episode. Until then, stay safe and hug your loved ones.